I'm building a 200 square foot modern writer's studio in the forest. I don't know what I'm doing, so I designed it in 3D and hopefully I can get some feedback to make it better. I bought a piece of forested land in Roxbury, Connecticut to build a house a couple years ago. I want to build a bunch of tiny creative studios scattered around the property. For example, if you wanted to write, design, or work on something where you could, where you needed like total focus, you could just come to one of these studios. So this is the first studio I've designed and I will uh, start, I guess, start building it soon. It's 200 square feet and the interior dimensions are about 11 feet by 12 feet. It's large enough to have a big desk, a chair, and even a couch. I want this thing to be well built and very comfortable. It's constructed on top of an insulated haunch slab of concrete. The structure is built from SIP panels, which are structurally insulated panels. Uh, the roof and cladding is black steel. There's a single window door, but it's big and it's made of glass. Um, there is an ERV air exchanger and a split system uh, slash uh, or AC slash heater. It'll be powered by so solar panels that trickle charge a bunch of lithium iron phosphate batteries that are inside the, sh the uh, studio. So I want to walk through the uh, steps of the building. Um, I don't really know what I'm doing. So like I said, so I uh, did everything in 3D by the steps that I think it's going to take to build it. And uh, yeah, so I want feedback from people to tell me, you know, how dumb I am. <laughs> and so I can build this right. Um, yeah, so the first step is uh, here's a piece of the ground and here's the uh, here's what the hole that I have to dig out of the ground. Um, the actual foundation itself is about 13 and a half feet by 12 and a, and a half feet. Um, so just sort of digging a couple feet around that. Um, I've also dug a trench, which I'll show you um, the reason why I'm doing that. So the first step is once I dig that, I put a, a layer, a thin layer of gravel down. Then I'm going to put down a, <clears throat> a, uh, uh, set of perforated, uh, pipe that acts as the drainage. So any water that comes in, it will, uh, collect and then go out the, uh, go out the drain here, out, out to daylight, I guess, as they say. Uh, then put a layer of gravel on top. Oh, one thing real quick is I wanted to explain that in this case, I'm only digging down uh, basically two feet, uh, even though in Connecticut, I guess, it's uh, the, the, the uh, frost line is deeper than that. Um, the thing is, is that there, it's basically on top of ledge. So to dig down deeper than that, would be really hard uh, to, I basically have to, to blast through the, the ledge there. So I think that this is gonna be okay. But if anyone sees any issues with that, I don't know, um, let me know. So, all right, so I, so I, have this, uh, I have this gravel laid down. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is lay down my formwork for the concrete. So I'm gonna do a floating insulated slab. So this is four inches of, of uh, 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 insulation foam around the slab and underneath it, and then this lip that goes out. Um, then over the top of that insulation, I'd have a uh, vapor retarder. So this is generally what the shape will look like. And this comes eight inches off of, uh, off of grade. Then after that, I put in rebar. Um, I will. I think at the at the top here, it's it's like uh, four or five inches um, in the middle of the slab, and then goes down about two feet for the for the for the sort of haunch footing type things. Um, then I pour the concrete, and that just goes on like that. Um, then I fill. I backfill all the stuff and hopefully I'm left with a really nice uh, concrete slab and this pipe that goes out uh, to uh, daylight there. Um, the next thing I do is I put put down these things called sill plates, which are just, uh, I think in this case, two by sixes. And um, they just sit there um, and they are, even though I don't show this, they're 
there's uh, some anchor bolts that are drilled and epoxied to the concrete, and that's how they're uh, that's how the sill plates are attached. Um, then on top of the sill plates is where the SIP panels uh, are placed, and they kind of go right just right on top of the of the sill plate. So um, and then they're screwed in at the bottom. And um, even though it's not modeled here, the middle of the it's basically like two pieces of OSB with uh, insulation in the middle. So I have each one of these things uh, is basically com comes pre-cut uh, by a CNC machine. They're just kind of delivered. You just put them together and screw them together using SIP screws. And uh, the end result is, you know, uh, uh, a st structural but also really well insulated uh, uh, building at the end. And even the roof is, um, is a SIP panel that is a thicker SIP panel. And I don't know exactly what the thickness will be in the end. I think here, maybe 10 inches or something like that. Um, then I put some, um, some flashing around the edge of it so that no water goes into the bottom. And another thing I should say is that the corners of the, the or any of the seams are basically uh, taped using uh, SIP, SIP panel tape to keep it airtight, both on the, both on the uh, inside and the outside. Um, then I put another bit of flashing on the outside, outside of the door area. Then I install the roofing, which is, um, you know, my soffit, my uh, fascia, and then um, this, this sort of standing seam metal roof at the top, and then a drip guard in the front. Um, before that, I put on a piece of felt paper, um, and to basically waterproof it and then I'll, I, I think I'm going to put a little bit of a standoff so there's going to be an air gap between the um, the SIP panel roof and the, the steel there. Then I install the, the, the door which in this case is the door and the window. Um, it's just this swivel door that uh, that uh, the, the company that's making my windows for my house sells. I think it's really nice. It's pretty, it's pretty big. Um, let's see. Then I install the cladding, which is just similarly like this opaline, opaline um, product that's a kind of corrugated steel. And uh, I, put, I put like wooden offsets. I install wooden offsets and then just screw the the paneling into that that side. Um, oh shoot! I totally forgot. Uh, there's a step that I probably need here that I didn't put in there, but that's house wrap to so to completely wrap the house on the outside so that it's it's waterproof. So I gotta I gotta kind of remember to do that. Um, then I have finishing, which is um, you know basically if you just walk in here, it's just the uh, it's just the uh, um, the drywall and then I put a little uh, section up here and up here in this section will be where I can put uh, the batteries or any um, you know sort of utility kind of storage there um, let's see next step is furniture furnishing so here you can see I, I put um, I have like a C table a desk a chair some shelving some sound deadening devices uh, which are just foam and fabric, and then a, and then a couch here. Uh, oh, the other thing is, is that even though I guess it's part of mechanicals and not furnishing, there's a uh, there's a split the uh, the split system is installed up there. Um, oh yeah, the other thing is, is that I know that they sell split systems that are not these plastic things, but actually they look like vents. And that's probably what I'll try to end up doing is just have a vent up there so that it's not so in your face. Um, let's see. So the next thing is um, installing a concrete patio, which I think would be nice. Um, because the terrain kind of slopes down, I think that would look pretty, pretty good. Um, I have these bollards that I designed, which are these cement um, uh, uh, I guess rectangular tubes with this this kind of plastic coats um, and uh, yeah plastic shades I mean um, 
concrete sign. I have this idea of putting a sign there. That's probably not the way it'll look, but you know, I think that'll look nice. Um, and then the last thing is lighting. Uh, and then, uh, and then here's a here's sort of where I imagine putting the solar panels. I was initially going to put the solar panels on the roof, uh, but. It, I need to be able to clean them off and it just it's it's just a lot easier it makes more sense and I have tons of land so put them offset from the building run a cable back charge the batteries inside of the the studio and then you know that's that's it um, I can add some humans for scale so you can kind of see roughly how big this this uh, spot is I guess I could switch to a to a camera view um, so you get a wider field of view, but this is sort of roughly how it would look sitting in the chair, looking back and then going out. Um, yeah, and then in the context of the land, this is the way that it looks, which is I 3D scanned the land with, uh, with uh, the, the LiDAR scanner on the iPad. That's sort of roughly how it looks. And... Uh, yeah, that's it. So yeah, I'd love to get I'd love to get feedback about this design. If I'm doing anything wrong, or if there's a different approach, I can I can uh, I can take. Um, I guess the next step is I need to make drawings. Uh, I need to figure out how much concrete I need. I need to order the SIP panels from the SIP panel company. I need to order the roofing, the siding, and that door slash window. Um, and then if all of that is good, uh, yeah, I want to start, I want to start building this, uh, as soon as possible. Anyways, thanks. Bye.